Target's driving growth through all the great investments we're making to reimagine our store experience. As we continue to open flex format stores, we're focused on three areas, college campuses, dense suburban areas, and urban neighborhoods. We then curate our assortment and our store design to what's right for the local neighborhood, and our guests love the experience. My name is Jillian. I work here in the Rittenhouse area at a nearby restaurant a couple blocks away. I find myself here a couple times a week. It kind of turned into my convenience store. The fresh fruit and produce is all here right when you walk in. There's apparel right at your fingertips, and then you only have to walk a couple steps away to find everything else that you need. It makes me feel at home, which is really, really awesome. My name is Karina Carpiet. I live in Long Beach, California, and I'm a working mother of two. I like shopping at this Target because it's very convenient. It's right next to where I work, and it gets me in and out quickly. I come to the store at least three times a week. They have the essentials, so things that you run out of quickly, you can just come in here and pick them up. I also can go online and make a shopping list, order it up, and just pick it up. I'd like to spend my time more cooking meals and spending time with my family, so I can just run in here, pick up a few things, and be on my way to cooking that meal and spending time at home. You know, I work with students at the college, and I get asked, well, you know, I'm not from here. Where can I go? And I just tell them right up the street, there's a Target. <laughs> my name's Brittany. I'm a third year at UC Berkeley, and we're at my neighborhood Target store. What's most Berkeley about this store is probably the size and its location, definitely in accordance to campus. It's pretty conveniently located. With class schedules being so crazy and like random, sometimes I'll only have an hour, so it's really easy to just come in and go out back to class. I love most targets just because there's always that cheery bright red, but I definitely love the artwork on here. I think it's really like custom and different. I grew up with my mom uh, going shopping at Target, and now with this location downtown in Berkeley, I feel like Target's definitely growing with me. Hello, everyone. This is Lakshmi Sharma. Uh, I'm Vice President Cloud and Compute and Platform Engineering at Target. Uh, I'm going to take you through the IT transformation journey uh, that Target, that's happening at Target to deliver the best guest experience and how it is happening. It's happening through continuous learning process, using technology all around, uh, putting agile, DevOps, using open sources, all of it using networking, data, all of it in scale, uh, in action at scale. And how we are doing it, I'll take you through some of the glimpses, glimpses of that technology transformation and the business drivers behind it. So uh, some of the pieces I will cover, so there, what's the investment we, that's behind? What are the business drivers? What's happening in infrastructure and operations space? What's happening in connectivity? Connectivity uh, is about networking, data center networking, cloud networking. Uh, and what is the, how is this whole thing getting connected? The video that you saw, I will keep referring to that video in how technology is driving that evolution that you saw here. Uh, and how data is, data is being used, how analytics is being used to drive the entire experience um, I'm going to take you through. And how could you help? So what are the you know, direct feedback from some of the consumers of this technology, which is our users in the stores and the team members at the stores? I've taken some of the feedback and brought it, brought it here to share with all of you. So uh, some little bit about us. Our target is it, uh, it, 1,806 stores, 1,806 in United States. 38 distribution centers continue to grow. Uh, 323,000 team members all across these stores and headquarters. Uh, we are headquartered in Minneapolis and we have a global team in India. We are the fourth most visited retail website in United States and more than 26 million unique visitors and unique mediums and unique visitors each month on average. So when, you're gi when I'm giving these numbers, think, think of it as IP addresses, think of it as the data endpoints, IoT, and, and multiply them by some number, X numbers, to get to your IoT devices. 
So that's the scale of the data, and that's the scale of the network bandwidth and latency I'm talking about, and that's why technology transformation is important. So uh, $7 billion. Uh, in February, our CEO, Brian Cornell, he announced an investment, capital investment of uh, this much amount over the next three years in various categories to drive, uh, to drive the sales, to increase the uh, market share, and to increase the uh, guest experience at all levels. Levels at digital, levels at mobile, phone, stores, all around, all across the sectors. So all of that and what the thing that is driving it the most is technology and our supply chain. So innovation in those two areas, innovation in digital, that's all is driving and that's where the investment is happening. And, and what, are the, what are the pillars that, that are going to be used um, in order to kind of fuel this growth and uh, get, get us to the market share that we are looking at? A digital first and three pillars. We'll be looking at stores, digital channel, and supply chain. How do we bring them? How do we bring them together and make them a smart network? A smart network from a supply chain perspective and smart network from connectivity perspective. And what else do you put on top of it to drive the efficiencies across all of them to get to our vision and get to our goal of uh, high scale, high efficiency, and the best user experience, best guest experience. So we have five priorities that we have identified, and not all of them may uh, sound to you directly as some technical priorities, but think of all of them somehow connected through some technology, somehow being delivered through software or some hardware experience. Uh, On-demand shopping, it's not just online. On-demand shopping means any, any, anytime, anywhere, same shopping experience. If you have a cell phone and you're going to an online, if you have an app on your cell phone, or you're using a laptop, or you are in-store using a laptop, you're in-store using a phone, no matter where you are, giving you the same experience, same quality, you being able to uh, ship an item which is ordered from online to your home within a time that you want, you can go to a store and be standing in a line, somebody coming to you and getting your order delivered right when you're, when you're thinking that you have spent more than 15 minutes in the line. Think of all those possibilities, and all of them means on-demand shopping experience. Merchandise categories, uh, uh, on the item side, yes, we need to continue to evolve on what are the categories and what are different brands that we will continue to kind of add to our portfolio. Uh, lo localization and personalization. Now we'll refer back to the video that you saw. Um, and combining the next bullet, which is small format. So a lot of investment that we have announced that's going to happen in the next three years is in a small format stores or in remodernization of a store. So what does that mean? So when we are going from a big general purpose store format to a small format, which if a lot of customization need to happen in the inventory, a lot of space consolidation need to happen. You cannot buy the same size store as you buy uh, in, you know, in some remote area. Uh, the similar, similar amount of money and the similar amount of inventory, you won't be operationally efficient if you use the same kind of capacity in say, uh, San Francisco city or in New York. So in order to address the local needs of the market, in order to address the, give the personal experience to your guest in the store, uh, the small format stores are going to be key. But what it means is that there is a huge amount of innovation that needs to happen in supply chain. Now you cannot use those big trucks sending big boxes of items. Now you're thinking about really uh, your personalized experience of five items of each type or one item of each type coming to a store. Now you visualize each item has an RFI tag and each item needs to be placed somewhere to be brought from hundreds of locations to that store. The small format store, they may not have any inventory in the store. So how a distribution center is going to send them in the time so that that, uh, that small format store, which is sitting in a university, which is sitting at the corner of a very, uh, very populated, uh, or densely populated, diverse uh, kind of area. So all of that is technology. You're talking about how you pull the inventory same day, within an hour, from a fulfillment center. How do you deliver that to the guest, you know, ship to that, 
ship to a guest. All of that in this new format world, supply chain, software, and technology, they all get merged together. And while we are uh, f focusing on the priorities, it's really important that we continue to look at uh, transformation in a way that we continue to simplify our cost. We call it N minus one, N and N plus one. So every time we are looking at N or N plus one, we will continue to kind of look at how do we retire or how do we consolidate N minus one technology? How do we consolidate business processes which are N minus one before we get to N plus one? Otherwise the number and the variations of the processes and technologies that we use will be, uh, will be out of control. So connecting with our guests. So Target, uh, one and a half year ago, like in July 2015, uh, Target opened this uh, a Target Open House. It's a, uh, it's a place of connected device concept. So it's a place where we can invite our guests, we can invite our partners, and you know, some customers and vendors. They can touch and feel what an IoT experience looks like. How, how, should, we, uh, how should we put things on the shelf? How do we use technology? to address the needs of this flexible fulfillment we are talking about. The speed and uh, delivery to our guests across different channels we are talking about. So there have been like around more than 75 companies in past 18 months, uh, more than 150,000 guests and customers and partners, and even some friends from the retail world, like you know our uh, partners from that industry have also come and they get to kind of experience and feel how technology is put into action. A really good place to see that how, I, how IoT works, and once we once we get that input from our guests, when we get that experience from our partners in technology and business, we take that experience and we try to put the best case into use and operate, try to operationalize that into our stores and other experiences. So a good concept. So so far we have learned a lot from this, and we'll continue to do so. All the transformation, like at any time you're talking about word called transformation, you know, it's people are the key, right? So culture needs to be able to support that. People need to be able to support that. Technology transformation needs a lot of education, a lot of learning, a lot of investment in people, and Target has done all of that. Um, a continuous learning does not happen if you don't give, allow your team members, allow your teams to invest into that learning, invest into that training. So we have, we have gone, um, gone and invested into people, uh, practices around Agile, practices around DevOps, formal training, informal training, and putting special programs in place so that we make it and put it into action in real time. So their investment in people, investment in technology. So when I talk about technology, again, going back to supply chain, putting that format, putting a store like, you know, open store concept, all of that is about training and continuous learning. So me being there only five months as of you know, uh, this month, but a huge investment has already happened here. And that's the reason, uh, to be honest, I feel like uh, we are ready. We are just ready to take that investment that our CEO has announced and put it into action to the right use and to really be a leader in this space. So uh, if this investment has already been happening, if the culture is ready, What's changing? It, it's the speed. So if you want to do, open these many stores, just change the way you are putting your format and putting your supply chain being almost real-time inventory management on your shelf from the distribution center or shipping, it, it takes a lot of speed and a, and a focus on that speed and delivery. Uh, linear to smart network, uh, what, what does linear mean? For just very quick kind of definition from retail, like. Going from um, a merchandise or a shipping comes from some place, X place, to a shipping place. It goes to some distribution center or some fulfillment center if it is digital. Then from there, this distribution center, it will go to a store. And from store, it gets fulfilled or it gets uh, sent, to a, um, sent to a guest if they have ordered it to ship from store. Otherwise, it gets just directly sent to the guest from a fulfillment center. So think about all of that. So now what's changing from linear model to uh, a smart network means that it can directly go from maybe a shipping place directly to a customer, or maybe a store becomes a fulfillment center. Think of how much technology changes. Now when you're those of you, like if you're thinking network, think of like 
What kind of bandwidth would be required for those stores? How, what kind of backup links were you thinking about? How do you serve a small store versus a big store? You know, satellite links, all those kinds of concepts, backup link, what, what would be that like? What would be the latency for that be like? So that's all is going to happen like with this change. So linear to smart network, it's not just a process change, it's a technology change as well. Our digital infrastructure, we are replatforming. We have replatformed our digital site, and we are replatforming it more and more to support the scale, to support the new number of customers, and give the agility to our developers so that they can continue to give these applications every day. Uh, we, we have scrum teams that are one day. We have scrums that go one day. We just put things from writing to deploy within sometimes in five minutes. So that's how truly DevOps we are. And in order to support that scale, you really need that technology and those people, culture, and mindset, and support. Uh, Re-platforming re mobile channels. So when you visit a Target store, you see team members with devices in hand. So they can come to you, and they can offer you the same online experience as you get from your mobile phone or, uh, or from your laptop. So that, that needs some platform as well. Because you're thinking about that being able to, we being able to, from data center, deploy applications to all those 323,000 um, team members I talked about. Imagine the scale, platform running on those many devices, maybe into two, into three X devices, and then that platform should be able to uh, deploy those applications that I talked about, which are being d deployed every day. So that's the technology transformation I'm talking about more speed, more performance, stability, capacity. So how much capacity would you need on an Android device versus how much capacity would you need on an iPad versus uh, you know, data center, the server where you're actually running these, uh, these uh, applications, where you're building these applications. So a lot of those uh, you know, decisions to be made, and, but at all the time, scale is in our mind because that's the scale, the number of team members, the number of stores, and how fast you kind of move around your items across them, how fast you deploy a promotion or a coupon to a guest who is coming online, that's all, it, it's a huge scale we are looking at. And all of that would not happen if you don't have a feedback mechanism. If an item gets, if you see a shelf which is kind of empty, you would feel like, oh my God, is this store going to close or something, right? So even to from like, how do you fast kind of put things on the shelf and if you're bringing experience, online experience to a customer, how that customer only gets, gets the items and things, something which we are all used to doing it, but at the back there, there is some uh, you know, personalization, there is some identity management, there is some analytics playing the role in order to get you the inventory or in order to get you the items on your screen that, that you want based on, based on your previous behavior. So behavior analysis, analysis and the data analytics, identity management, they all play a role in order to get you the flexible and a, the experience that you want for yourself. So while we are uh, executing fast, you know, we, we cannot lose the focus. Focus is on operational efficiency. We make sure that operationally we are right. You cannot just deploy an application which doesn't work because disrupting a, a sales store, we call them pause, point of sales or the cash registers that you see. You know, imagining an application going bad at the deploy and you kind of halting all those pause just cannot happen. There is no scope for making it happen. I mean, this, there's just no scope for failure in those cases. You kind of somehow putting an application or an upgrade on digital, and imagining digital site going down, and think of those 26 million plus subscribers, just cannot happen. So there is no scope for error when it comes to configuration management, conf deploy, it, it has to be real time and it has to be right. Uh, core business investment, our core business and digital core and supply chain, and the user experience that you get from it. That's core business investment. Store shopping experience, I talked about there, there was an application that just really was launched two, two weeks ago by our CIO, um, CEO, so it was, it's about save the sale. So you, you go online and then you save all the items there, you go to a store, you're standing in the line, and then somebody can come, with, come to you and they will open your inventory from online and they will just look at this and will be able to serve you, so like as if you have bought that into the store. So you can just choose your items from any place, 
anywhere online, and then you go to any store which is nearest to your home, and you will get that delivered, and get that experience delivered off online into a store. So mixing both of them, converging both of them, and it's all of it is about how you're developing application, how you're connecting the inventory in stores, where is the data getting stored, how fast do you replicate that data, what is your data replication strategy so that the information that you put in, into online that gets uh, reflected onto the cash register where this person is going to be fulfilling your experience. So think of replication, think of data here, and learn and innovate. We are, we are continuously learning, and uh, we, we have a culture of learn if it doesn't work because it's like we're talking about a day cycle, we're talking about scrums running for two or three days. So it's very fast. You learn, innovate, and you continue to uh, drop the things that don't work, and then just move on with the things that are working. So what we have done so far with all the transformation, so we started by reorganizing teams. What it means is that we are very um, uh, outsourced focused, so we just turned it around. Uh, now we are in-sourced. We have a lot of engineering talent. Uh, the ratio has reversed. We used to be around 70 percent offshore, outs outsourced to 30 percent in source, the number has changed. So a lot of hiring in past two years, a lot of people like who understand all these technologies brought, brought from all many places, 50, 60 PhDs, they are data scientists and the artificial intelligence uh, category. There are a lot of people like, you know, author of Spinnaker, people like who have authored like Dockers and I means from all Netflixes and Googles and Facebook and you, you name like or Cisco's or Brocade. So we have people from all over working on this technology in order to support this growth. Very laser focused. Uh, so the company used to run in a services model, which is like project-based model. It went from project-based model uh, to uh, say product model. So we, are, we, have, we have used DevOps Agile and in order to drive the products, use data and continue to use the data to focus on priorities. How we operate, as I said, like we have product model, agile DevOps, we work like and continue to reduce uh, our technical debt and all the newer applications, they, they are using like, you know, new technologies like containers and uh, uh, CIC, newer CICD pipelines, newer way of networking, all of that. So how do we deliver to that experience? Uh, application and data, so everything that is our APIs, they are built using, you know, every, every application that has to be written using APIs as the interfaces. Externalization, which is like public facing APIs as well as internal APIs. Data is, is, a, data is all there. And then we put layer on top so that you can consume that data. So data is a service being offered to any application that is written. A risk profiling of application and data continuously. Cloud and compute, we are, we are into public cloud, use private cloud, private cloud based on OpenStack, Kubernetes, all of that. So all the choices, we, we have all those options. We make decisions every day in how do you redesign the application and what load goes where through the CDNs and through the global load balancer, like you know, internal products for the internal load balancing, all of that in action continuously. Use connectivity to give a consistent user experience, faster response time, uh, to over network, all the network segmentation that you, you that you that you're aware of. Very importantly, application-based VPN. When you try to rewrite an application and try to put some components of that application in your private cloud for some reason and some part in public cloud, you're thinking about you know, uh, think of NFV but at an application layer. So now your network becomes key. Security of your application becomes key. Key. And how do you deploy that application? How do you make sure of the keys and the security and the identity of the user who is deploying it and the network that is serving it? So all of that segmentation and running at application level, I call it application VPN. So managing keys and managing security at application level, which is distributed across clouds and data centers. Identity becomes identity federation, role-based access, all of that plays a role in there. Because you think about this, hundreds of thousands of uh, customers, hundreds of thousands of team members trying to access these applications. Identity management is very important. Or any device can be taken outside a store, and then how do you kind of manage that identity? Devices, all the devices that I talked about, the team members using like iPods and Android. So writing applications for all of them, the platform that can 
Uh, here it's not just public cloud or private cloud. The cloud that is sitting on your Android device and a team member, that's a cloud for me. That's, that's a place where I have to deploy my platform. But choice of the platform for that device would be different for the one that you are running in public cloud or running in private cloud. And we are huge users of open source, huge users of open source. So the focus is in, infra uh, in infrastructure and operations. The focus is simplifying the environment, using open source, standardizing on compute storage and networking. When I use word compute in IT word, uh, compute storage and the elements around it, they are all kind of same. We, uh, we do kind of talk about that, hey, administrator is a network administrator of computer storage, but a lot of convergence has already happened, at least for us. So we, we are into converged infrastructure journey. We have converged like almost a block with compute storage, and even the networking layer has kind of come and converged from a software-defined perspective into kind of compute. So we have already made that kind of journey and done a lot of performance testing and monitoring in what makes sense in the converged infrastructure. So, so I, I, I believe in converged infrastructure and we are making that happen. Uh, relent, uh, automated infrastructure recovery. So today, like if somebody calls from store, uh, they, they won't, before they call from the store, there is already a lot of rel reliability, a lot of kind of you know, troubleshooting already happened in the background and that has all has happened through uh, automated recovery and automated healing. I'll quickly run through my slides because I'm running out of time. Uh, so we, we are, as I said, like we, are, uh, we have our own API gateway that offers security, key management. Everything is like you know, continuous delivery. Uh, have, have invested a lot. If you think about APG, for example, from Google, think of an equivalent of that like you know, at API gateway level. So all of that developed, managed by us, by my teams uh, at Target. We, do, we, we are a big user of Spinnaker to do CI, CD deploy pipeline. Our same pipeline drops images, un, immutable images across all the clouds and data centers I talk about. Uh, Spinnaker pipeline, you know, running drone, drone kind of driving Kubernetes deployment, all of that has already happened because I, the hybrid cloud and the journey doesn't happen without all of that integration. So we're big users of open source like Kafka, Cassandra, uh, Spinnaker, OpenStack, Kubernetes, a lot of, lot of investment in all of those. We have a lot of experts in the team who are working in developing this and putting that to action. So open source adoption to us means like it's a title control. So we can own our product uh, delivery roadmap because we can deploy and we are not dependent for every single key element of our delivery on the vendors and the partners. So uh, our teams believe that open source and adoption of open source has given us the CI, CD, and the DevOps like the way we are doing it because we wouldn't have been faster if we wouldn't have built these things on our own and have the support of the open source platform that we have. So this is a view of like, you know, without putting like public clouds and clouds of how we are connected, like, you know, at stores to data centers to cloud, we have three huge data centers, uh, all in Minneapolis, and we are into public cloud. We have our own internal public-facing cloud as well. As I said, we use OpenStack and uh, you know, Kubernetes technologies. So using data evolution, some of the technologies, deep, we, we are big users of deep learning, machine learning, web scale distributed. So if, when you think about stores, you're really talking about not terabytes of information, you're talking about petabytes of information in some cases almost every day. And then how do we store that information? What do we drop? What kind of analytics do we put on top of it? That's all part of that whole journey I'm talking about. Using data as a service, it's a big, big thing for us. And data as a service through APIs and making sure that it is delivering to the promise that we have. How you can help? So this is a feedback, as I said, coming directly from the users or from the deployment people at the stores and other places. So better utilization into VPN connectivity performance. So we run into these challenges when you're trying to connect to different stores or to you know, clouds or data center. So if the VPN goes wrong, like IPsec VPN or your MPLS VPN, there's very less kind of control we have in what's happening there. And now think of these people who are coming from DevOps and troubleshooting experience. They, they just want to know what's going wrong because they want to be able to fix that. So there is very less trending and reporting, like it just takes hours and hours to get that troubleshooting going. Uh, clear recommendation, so this is just very recent. So 
it, it seems like, hey, we are already talking about 5G, but there are still challenges in, you know, is LTE is the right thing for us or Wi-Fi is the right thing for us at this particular location versus another location? Still kind of, you know, need more help there, like from, you know, service providers offering managed services to us. Self-service offering, we would like to, if, if you're bringing applications, if you want us to use software as a service, please make it a you know, self-serve self experience for us because we, we have moved pretty fast in uh, Agile and the DevOps world. Self-serving is really the key. How do you consume? Being very prescriptive in how do we use applications and make it easy to support those services. Give the same experience. Don't, it's, it's, today, it's a different experience for on-prem troubleshooting versus off-prem or how do we consume on-prem versus off-prem. That takes us a lot of time. Two days of kind of training here and one day kind of training there. That's a lot of time and different kind of focus that requires. So a consistent experience for deploying and troubleshooting on-prem, off-prem. So those are some of the things that I believe like, you know, would help our teams. So with that, like, thank you very much. <laughs>